Welcome to the Close to Home podcast. I'm Brennan Klaus. And I'm Tracy Erickson. And we are so excited today. We're going to talk about one of my favorite food groups. I don't know about you, Tracy, but... I know it's one of yours, yes. (laughs) Every time... Every time I do a workout, I just need to stop for a little donut. So. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> your everyday treat. Yes. We are talking about donuts today. We're super excited. We're very excited to have me, Kim, with us, who Hello. started <laughs> Raised Donuts. Hi. Tell us. Give us an intro to you, me. Um, I'm me, Kim. I own Raised Donuts. I... I've been in Seattle for a very long time. I think ever right after high school, I grew up in Olympia. Um, and I have a little dog named Noodle, and she's like a little store, ma- what is it called, mascot? I don't know oh, what it is. Cute. Yeah, <laughs> very yeah. cute. But, but we love her. Um, and I don't know, I just, I make donuts. That's <laughs> so, awesome. What, let's start with where you were before you made donuts where where did you start with your with your baking career or your kid you know being in the kitchen yeah so my parents owned a restaurant as a kid you know during the summers and anytime we're basically not in school uh they brought us to the restaurant and it was out in Sumner Washington so over the years like I was small and so I like had to beg to like help with the dishes and then I was like working in the kitchen line and just helping out here and there um and then, I don't know, senior, no, junior year came along, and I was taking all the classes to go to college and whatnot, but I just knew that it wasn't for me, because I'm someone that likes to, like, work with my hands, and I fall asleep really easy when I'm sitting down, so, oh. <laughs> so I was like, this, even during, like, culinary school lectures, I would be, like, passing out, but anyways, uh, so I decided to go to culinary school, and I went down to Portland um, and did the Western Culinary Institute program. And then I came up to Seattle on an internship and at Macarena Bakery. And then I was there for 10 years and I kind of like worked my way up. Wow. wow. Yeah. So cool. That's wow. a long time. I know, right? <laughs> How many pastry chefs are there at Macarena too? It's, are there multiple? It's hard to say. I, I don't know how, when I was there, it was always, there was bakers and then there was, um, um, assistant manager, which would man each store, because each store had their own, uh, what's it called, pastry chef, or own manager, or, yeah, and so after that, after a few years of being there, um, they created a position of head pastry chef for me to stay, and, like, manage all four, of the sh- or three at the time, but then it turned into four shops, yeah. Nice. Oh, cool. That's so I, th- I think one of the most interesting questions, or, you know, what I always wonder is, you know, what was the moment that you know, you've been a Macrina for 10 years, you're, you know, managing these stores. Um, what's the point where you're like, you know what, I'm going to go do my own thing. And this is, you know, I'm going to start my own business. This is what I'm going to do. When you was know, that for you? So it's funny, because my whole life, like watching my parents own a restaurant, I saw how hard it was. And even them, they were like, don't do it. Don't do your own thing. Get a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Make money. And yeah. I was fine with that. And every time someone asked me like, oh, when are you going to open your own thing? Come on, like do it. And I'd always say, oh, I'm not gonna. But if I do, it'd be a donut shop. But I don't know, somewhere around the eight or nine year mark with Macrina, I think I was just getting kind of exhausted mentally of just managing and the staffing was very, was really hard to like find. And like, I love teaching, but finding staff that wanted to be taught was really hard. And we needed so many people and whatnot. So I think I was just getting pretty worn out about that. And so I was like, I'm going to do my own thing. Who knew? Uh, (laughs) Never say never because you always eat your words. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And it just kind of clicked one day. And I was like, I had the idea. I started really thinking it out. And then I um, met my now business partner a year before that. But I hit him back up to be like, hey, do you want to give me some business advice? Just because I have the kitchen stuff down, but I need some like, I don't know what's going on the other side. And at the end of that conversation, he signed on and was like, do you just want to do it together? And I was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, I can front it all. That's and awesome. I was like, okay. So then the next week I gave my notice. And so it just happened like that, which is, I think, pretty rare. Because um, I mean, I had like a 10-year plan. Yeah. On just even getting to get started, saving enough money, whatnot. So kind of a fun fun way wow. it happened so then out of everything that you were baking at mm-hmm. macrina why did you choose donuts 
Like, so one thing we like, didn't, you know, I mean, I can, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, can was... imagine you probably baked like a million things. And I think that's partially why I chose donuts and one item really, because it's funny. Cause like in the last couple of years, I was in Macrina. I went to Korea with my family. It was the first time they'd been back since, um, they'd been back since I was born. So it's been like 30 years, but still to that day, like, um, Korea has like these little food areas and markets, but each like alleyway really only is like one item. And each place just does that item. and But they do it, like, super well. You know when you go in there, it's yeah. going to be, like, amazing. And so be, coming from Akrina and being like, oh, my God, we do, like, hundreds of items. And we have to do so much every day and yeah. whatnot, the variety, which is great to learn and everything. But for me to build, like, this business and, like, life that I wanted, because with building Raised, I had always imagined, like, having a life, work, work-life work balance, and which I didn't have before, um, like, this, like, throughout all my 20s just like that was a wash but uh but like coming to like 30 yeah. like getting close to 30 I was like okay well I really value this if I'm going to do my own thing I'm going to try and do it in a way that will work for me long term so um yeah so that's why I decided to do just like one item focus do it really well it's the advice I give a lot of people starting out just pick one thing do it well you can always expand don't try and do everything at once <laughs> um and yeah, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you found your location, your spot in the central district? Because you were mentioning yeah, that. Maybe, maybe yeah, go ahead, Brendan. Exactly. Maybe tell people exactly where it is. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. that area is a lot different than I think when you started searching, right? For sure. Yeah. When we went out there, we actually found it through our realtor because they um, saw it on the residential uh, list MLS instead of the commercial, which was really confusing. And so he was like, mm-hmm. what do you think of this? And he was like, our two, like, well, one real parameter, like, or like necessary thing we needed was a hood system. And like, they have to yeah. put fryer hoods through the roof. And so if you go into yeah. a multi-level building, you have to pay for them to cut all these things. And so Eamon and I were like, mm-hmm. well, my business partner, we were like, we want something that's like turnkey. We'd already waited so long to even find a place. So he found the spot in the central district. We sat on it for a really long time. And because no one really knew about it, because it wasn't in the commercial listing, like we were pretty lucky in that sense. Um, we were looking at like the Vertex spot on Capitol Hill. Uh, we were looking at like even the place at Numo's was, had a little like night spot, which I was crazy for thinking it would work uh, for us because I'm a morning <laughs> person. <laughs> and we were, like, so des- we were just like, we were getting really desperate. A lot of like talks we were having didn't work out. And, um, we almost at one point even said, like, should we just, like, stop looking? Because, like, we were having no luck. But this was always in the background. But Eamon was really against it because he was, like, there's, like, no foot tra- traffic out there right now. And for him and his business knowledge, he was, like, and his experience, he was always, like, you need foot traffic. You need foot traffic. So towards the end, I was, like, Eamon, I just, I really think this is a great spot. It, like, fits what we need right now. If it's not enough foot traffic, I can find out ways to make it work in other, and, like, you know, I can do more or do things in a different way. And he was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> and so we took it and it's, I don't, I mean, it couldn't have been a better spot for us to start out in. I, we love the neighborhood right away. Like foot traffic was there. Um, the neighborhood has changed a ton. Yeah. I think when, since when we, was your opening date? Uh, it was 2018, I believe. Uh, June yeah. 30th, 2018. Yeah. June 30th, 2018, because Mm -hmm. for those that don't know that are listening, Raised Donuts is just a little south of 23rd and Union, which Mm -hmm. um, is claimed to fame as really Uncle Ike's, but has now expanded, (laughs) and there is PCC there on that corner, Tacos Chukis, Chukis. Squirrel Chops, uh, Coffee Shops, so there's a lot of stuff there now, and more being built currently, Mm -hmm. so you're probably going to increase your foot traffic even once the the final southeast corner is finished i know a new apartment building i think yeah and which is which we're going to be moving into so we signed a lease like oh, a are. few months ago uh-huh and so it's the midtown building and because we only have our lease for five years and the landlord was like is not willing to renew it so who knows what's going to happen with that place but um we'll see we we're yeah. thinking about some things, but we have it for a whole nother year after we move because we're moving. They deliver the space to us in September and then we should have it built out by December, but we'll have our original awesome. space. Yeah. So I'm hoping to use it as That's like a exciting. place. 
We're hoping I to, have to move into uh, that spot. Like no. spot. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, wow, that is you're, for me. Your your best customer right there. <laughs> I know, right? So if if I were to walk into Ray's Donuts, mm -hmm. what do I absolutely have to get? Like I would say, mm, yeah, I would say either a maple bar or a raspberry hold. But those oh. are like they're part of the originals. Um, they're the classic. Yeah. So you have, oh. you'll always be able to get them there. Um, but the monthly ones are always fun. I mean, I don't hate on those. Those are, they're oh like people goodness. wait whole whole year to get them again. So it's really fun. Wait, to, to get that. what? Which one? So like if we do one flavor in April, oh, that usually oh, yeah. doesn't come back yeah. until April. So I love yeah. seeing people be like, I can't wait. I've been waiting all year. <laughs> so what's the, so it's May right now. What's the, mm -hmm. the monthly Donut so we've flavor. got guava. It's pretty tropical for some reason, but it's guava coconut, passion fruit mochi. Oh. I did a new ch a chocolate chip donut with like brown butter glaze. Oh and my then what's God. the last one? What's the last one? Is that four? I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then it, what's coming up in June? Do you know? Or are they announced like at the beginning of the month? I shift them a little bit. Like we did a, we did one year and then I did the same flavors the next year. Now I'm like, oh, I kind of want to mix them up. But I know that the Nectarine braid is up next. I might do Dalgona coffee, the filled one. So it's like a coffee cream inside. And then a, that Dalgona. Do you have your the Dalgona coffee? Where it's like whipped no. coffee. And it's like really what? frothy and foamy. Oh. So we glaze it in that okay. instead. You should look it up. It's pretty bomb. You can make it at home. Oh. Um, I am literally ending this podcast and going to raise donuts <laughs> right now. Like I am dying over here. Oh my gosh. So that's, These flavors. I don't know what else is up for June. I forget. But I might have moved. But there's around. New, a few mm -hmm. new ones each month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, what awesome. do you usually sell out of every day? Like what do you know you're going to sell mm -hmm. out of or that like it just flies off the shelf? It used to be plain glaze, which was always surprising to me. But oh. Now it's turned it's turned into the bars. Like the chocolate uh -huh. and the maple fly out the door regardless. Yeah. And then depending on the time of the month, the monthly ones sell more. Like they always sell better in the beginning of the month and at the end of the month because people are like, oh, I got to have it. And then they're like, oh, no, it's going away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, are people like, do people come in, every, and this could be you, Brennan, but do people come in every single day that you see and get a donut? Like a Not, true regular where they're like getting donuts every day. I wouldn't say every day because that's like a lot, but yeah, they, come, yeah. they definitely come at least weekly. There's people that email yeah. us pre-orders every weekend, um, oh, like every oh, single, wow. like like clockwork, unless they're like out of town. There's people that come yeah. by for coffee and stuff almost every day, yeah. uh, but it just depends. Yeah. But we definitely see yeah. our regulars and it's fun, but they always are changing because it's like sad to see them go because they're like, it's my last weekend here. But then, like, oh. in this in the same day, it's, like, four new people are, like, oh, my God, we just moved in. So it's been That's a lot awesome. of transition, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and how – oh, go ahead, Brennan, sorry. I'm sorry, are you in the kitchen every day, or what's your schedule like? We have yeah. a – we're pretty lucky in the way that we built out our schedule. Andrea is my little right-hand lady, and she um, basically does everything I can do. So – we swap out. I work Thursday through Sunday to do all the donuts, and then she does all the cakes So uh, for the weekend. And then on every Monday and Tuesday, we swap. So every other week, we get three to four days off in a row, Got which it. is my nice because we're off one. I started like, at like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., uh, depending. Fridays, I have to go into like 1.30 uh, if it's really busy. Oh, my God. <laughs> How yeah. does that work? Like, what time do you go to bed? Um, like I try to go to bed at eight or nine, but you know, on the weekend, my, my husband and I are hanging out with friends or something and we just, I just sleep on the couch and they end go and do stuff and then I, we go home. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, sometimes I can I rally a little bit. Yeah. I don't drink I much anymore. I know a little so. bit. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. If you're yeah. waking up that early. The first I'll year I was bit. so scared. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, the first year we opened, I was so scared of like not waking up from drinking that I was like, I'm not <laughs> drinking forever for like whatever. And now like I'll dabble once in a while, but it's rare. I'm not really in any of that that much anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More important to be making the donuts in the morning. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what were you so saying earlier? Well, I was going to say, so what has it been like during COVID? You know, we've talked to a couple different people and you told us a little bit about how 
COVID has impacted different types of restaurants differently. What has been the impact to you and kind of what have you seen in the industry? Yeah, I guess for me, it really depends on what style of business, right? Because restaurants all across the board, there's so many different kinds. So there's restaurants, there's bakeries, there's bars, there's just like walk in and out places, there's fine dining. And the places that had the most staffing and the most like reliance on indoor slash like bar stuff, I think I hit the hardest because one, you couldn't be inside. Um, you had so much staffing you had to cut and then you weren't making enough from to go take out because it just like it's hard to balance that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that the cafes and the coffee shops for the most part, maybe the people that aren't like sitting down and working there anymore, maybe they got hit there a bit, but I think people still get their coffee. Um, they're just not hanging out all day, but I think coffee shops, donut shops like me, any kind of grab and go shops have like done super well. Um, we like have got, we just got like so busy that first like May, June, and then throughout the year, it just kept up. And I was shocked. Cause like, I mean, in March when they kept announcing closures, I was just like waiting every day, like, Oh no, they're going to shut us down. But then somehow we were still deemed essential technically, as long as we could do the takeout. Um, which our transition was so easy because mm-hmm. we just went moved like 10 feet from like our donuts in the case to our donuts to the window. And then we just meet everyone at the door. And I mean, we don't have espresso yeah. or anything. So like drip coffee is like five minutes or less or like a minute or less, um, et cetera. So yeah. we were just, and I only have three people working for me. And even at our busiest, like that's all we really need. We don't even have, we can't even like justify hiring right. another part-time person. So we just, the business that was, built was like pretty set up for COVID, which I feel super fortunate about. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah. And what you mentioned before online orders or like pre orders, Mm -hmm. did you have that prior to COVID? Has that been something you've always had or is that new? Well, I was kind of against those for a long time because for me, starting from pop ups, I was like, if you're going to get here, come here and grab what you want. It's first come first serve. So I was always like, eh, I don't really like doing pre-orders. But once COVID hit, I was like, oh, yeah, we definitely got to do this because it just makes so much more sense. Yeah. <laughs> we elongated how long yeah. you could come in. We, like, extended an hour later for you to come and pick up orders. Uh, and so, yeah, it's funny, the shift. And now I'm like, I can't imagine not doing it because it really helps with – it helps us to plan our day. Like, if there's a ton of pre-orders, then I know, like, I can, like, bump up our, our badge size because, like, the walk-ins will, like, kind of balance it out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because you're pretty much baking everything the day of mm-hmm. or, or the morning of. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> well, it's good to hear that it's, yes. COVID has not impacted it too much and that it was an easy transition. Yeah. For, yeah. Once again, like, feel very fortunate because <laughs> I yeah. know it's yeah. been rough for a lot of people out there. And, um, and I love seeing what other people have done to like accommodate and like make their business work. Some people have like changed the whole business model. Other people have some places just decided to close because they didn't want to, I guess, um, adjust or they, they were in a position where they could. And that's great too. Um, sad to see them go though, obviously. Uh, but everyone I feel like did what the best they could. I hope at least it seems. Yeah. So what, what's on the horizon for you with, raised donuts or I mean just sticking with raised donuts or anything else on the horizon that's new and exciting Mm, well I have thoughts but once again I try and do things one at a time Uh, okay yeah right now like this year I'm focusing on moving the shop over and then I'm gonna hire someone to take over for donuts for me so I can kind of well I want to have a family but also uh or start a family but I also want to um give someone that opportunity to have that position and I want what is it I want to start writing a cookbook I've already started it but I haven't like really put my all my all into it yet but it's it's an it's happening and I want to focus on classes also because once I step away more I can like do a lot more classes our classes just to sell out like the whole year within a few months and so Oh I really want to, and with COVID, yeah. we missed the whole year. So people are like, I think pretty antsy to like, once we all feel comfortable going back into like oh. a common space, you know? So I'm hoping that's 2022. Once we yeah. move, I'll just post all the classes and we'll just have them all the time, have people in, learn how that's to make so some donuts. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's that amazing. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool. 
Yeah. So what's the best way for people to follow you, follow your story, uh, pre-order, come by, obviously, any other ways that people in the community can support you? Um, I think, yeah, just, I mean, we may, I do a lot on Instagram. Our website has as much information as I can give anyone. Uh, it just depends yeah. on if you want to read it. <laughs> but you can always call into the shop. Um, we're always trying to help people figure out what they want and how to get to us and whatnot. So yeah. whatever way you can find us, I say go for it. Um, but I think Instagram has the most like up to date stuff to get excited about. Um, and yeah, and then we'll the, when we move over, we'll be on Twenty Fourth and Union instead. So just like a corner okay, away, perfect. yeah. So, mm -hmm. And that's not until December, you think? Mm -hmm. Is that right? If all goes well, December, okay. yeah. If all goes well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you'll have classes as well. Mm -hmm. in yep. Yep. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So cool. great. Yeah. Well, so fun. thank you so yeah, much for you. joining us. Yeah, and um, I, I got to go because I got to go to raise donuts. I'm like, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Get over there. No, it's probably sold out by now. I my know. God. We're, cl I know. we're close now. <laughs> I know. I know. Tomorrow. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you so me. much. Me, yeah. Kim, from Raise yes. Donuts. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Okay.